Hey YouTube, Jay Kilroy here. We're going to start a new project. Drawings, link to the drawings in the Dropbox link in the description. Um, what we're going to make is, we're going to make, here's some stock, some brass, price on brass lately, crazy. Um, we're going to make a fogless misting, it's kind of a redundant, isn't it? We're going to build a fogless coolant uh, system, a uh, spray system. There's tons of plans all over the net for a zero fog mister. Uh, there's a set of plans that's been running around uh, out on the um, metalworking drop box since like 2004. Um, so we're going to do a variant of um, the uh, fogless coolant system. We're going to, and the part we're going to work on here right now is the main block, the block that brings the air and the coolant together to um, disperse it out through the nozzle. So that's what we're going to work on first. And um, I've got a piece of uh, brass here, 360 brass. I'm looking for a measuring tool. Here we go. It's a half inch thick, um, an inch wide, and you know three feet long. And what we're going to need is we're going to need a piece of stock. It's an inch and a half long, uh, an inch wide, and a half inch thick. Um, you could make these out of brass. You could make these out of aluminum uh, with a little more work. Um, there will be some soft soldering involved. That's easier to do with brass. Plus the brass is not going to corrode. Um, uh, some of the chemicals you, you use, uh, some of the coolant chemicals you use may not be compatible with aluminum, so uh, brass is a safer choice. Uh, anyway, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop this uh, in the bandsaw and cut off my two uh, inch and a half blanks. and. Um, then we'll come back, and it's, this is going to be almost all mill work. I think it's going to be all mill work. Uh, we'll come back and we'll start hitting all the features. Again, the plans, the drawing here, a nice, um, completely um, dimension drawing is uh, in my Dropbox, and the link is uh, in the description. So if you want to build one of these, um, you are equipped, and you can follow along. At the end, you'll end up with a very useful uh, tool. Um, I've got a reservoir here that fits a uh, old um, a Parker uh, filtration canister, stainless steel fil filtration canister, good for 150 psi. Uh, we're going to repurpose for uh, a coolant canister here. I'd prefer something that I could, you know, see the level, but. I got these, so we're going to use these unless I can find, I might have a couple of old, um, well, new old stock stashed uh, water filter housings. Uh, I've got some rental property and I put water filters in all of them, so I may have a couple of those. If I can find those, we'll use those. Going to need some air pressure regulators, um, small ones. Um, the benefit of this design is that it pressurizes the coolant at equal rate to the air so you don't get um, the spray fog that will fill your shop up and turn your shop into a choking uh, you know uh, man killer uh, of a work site. I, I, uh, I'm one of the people that reacts very poorly to um, the uh, misting style um, coolant. Uh, I've had asthma and allergies most of my life and it, it doesn't do well with me. So anyway, you're going to need some small air pressure regulators. Um, you're going to need a coolant canister of some sort. Water filters work great. Um, they're available on eBay. Uh, cheap. They're available at your big box stores cheap. You're going to need some tubing, some miscellaneous fittings and that kind of thing, some valves. Uh, you're going to need needle valves. Oh, where are those little boogers? Here's some little needle valves. Um, let me show you. 
Um, these are expensive, right? You don't have to use these, right? Um, there are needle valves that you can buy that are big clunky brass ones that um, are uh, commonly found in like uh, the plumbing department of your really rock store for five or six bucks. These are about 15 bucks a piece. Um, but they are nice and small. And um, so we'll go over some more of those parts as we move along. So right now let's get to the saw, cut us some of this uh, extremely overpriced brass and um, get to work. Alright, we're ready to get started. We've got our two blocks cut here. And before we get started, I want to point out a, something that's um, just something to consider when you're looking at the design of a part. Um, so obviously, this face here is the flat side. These are the two ends and this and this here are the top and the bottom there. This is all obvious, but notice something. There are a variety of features in this part. Right? Don't count these two holes. These two holes are just for mounting. There are a variety of features in this part that come from the ends and from the top. And they have to all meet at this point here in the middle, right? And there's not a lot of room for slot. This hole right here, this passage hole here right here is 40 thousandths, right? So there's, there's not a lot of room to be wrong. So what we're going to do is, is it required, it's, it's not required that all these parts be precisely in the middle of the block. But what is required is that all of these parts be spaced from one side or the other precisely the same. So what we're going to do is we're always going to work off the fixed jaw. The fixed jaw is where we're going to take our zero and we're going to work off the fixed jaw in the vise. And we're going to take one of our parts and we're going to mark it such that that part is uh, always that we always put the part in the vise the same way, right? So just take our sharpie here and mark it, right? So we know we should always put this side of the part against the fixed jaw. That way it doesn't matter if we're precisely in the middle of the part. That's really not relevant. It's just really not important. But what is important is that we're always 
working from the same side. If you start putting things in the vise once on this side and once on this side, you do have to be pre precise in the middle of the part. And that is a uh, tougher standard to set for yourself than is really necessary. We do it this way, mark it, always put that against the fixed jaw, always work off the fixed jaw, and then everything will line up. And in the end, that little 40 thousandths hole will hit this hole, which is a hundred thousandths hole, right? So, and uh, it has to work for that to be the case, right? So, anyway, we're good to go. Let's get the uh, machine set up and uh, let's start cutting some brass. All right, so we've got our um, center finder here mounted in the spindle, a 3 8 collet. We've got our stop just placed randomly uh, in the uh, groove. If your vice has one of these types of uh, uh, work stops, they're really little handy, handy little devices. Um, and uh, so what we're going to do now, like we said, we're going to do all of our work off this back jaw, right? We're going to do all of our dimensions in the Y off the back jaw. That way, we place our workpiece, mark side back, we'll always go against this back jaw. That way all of our dimensions coming in the same direction match. So as we work on the various faces of this part, we always put this mark side against the, against the fixed jaw. That'll keep us from making mistakes. Help us end up with a finished product that is usable. Um, so these are little things to think about. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pick up my Y zero dimension and my X zero dimension is going to be against the back of the stop. So this is what we're going to work off of for all of our dimensions. Okay, run it back so it hits. And then look for the jump. There we go. Jump. Set our Y to zero. And then we're going to double check. And just run into it again. Again, look for the jump. There we go. And, uh, Quick verification, we got zero. So that works pretty good. Now what we're going to do is pick up this X zero here. So get it in close to the jaw, and then run it down, and again, come in close. Watch for the jump. There we go. Enter our zero. And then let's cross this double check. Again, watch real careful. Boom. So there's our zero again check our DRO. There we are. So we have our zero, 00 effectively, which is zero on the back of the vise and zero on the work stop. Now we're not going to change any of that. We're done with that. All of our work will be done from these two dimensions. Again, mark your work pieces so that you always put the same uh, face against the fixed jaw. By the way, I I, uh, I lost my blue sharpie, so um, this may be offensive to uh, all of the uh, Keith Finner and uh, Ox Tool fans, but I have the uh, I guess this would be the pink sharpie. Um, 
so until I get some more blue sharpies, I'm going to have to uh, offend uh, folks uh, mightily. But I, I will report that the pink, kind of a red color, works as well as the blue in that it doesn't erase itself when you go back over it. So uh, it is a good alternative. Uh, if you if you're blue, if you lose all your blue sharpie or your blue sharpies, um, this color is also usable. So works better than the black. So uh, let's get uh, let's get this collet changed out, and um, we'll get set up to uh, start drilling some features into these blocks. Well, actually, no. We're just going to start. Uh, we're going to mill them to size first. Get the ends cleaned up. All right, first thing we're going to do, first thing we're going to do here is clean up these two blocks to length. All the other edges are smooth. We're going to clean up the two ends and uh, to the same length. Length, you know, one and a half inches is the goal, but it's not a critical dimension, obviously. Um, we got a two flute, a carbide end mill of. Uh, half inch diameter. We're running it here at about a thousand RPM. That's one end. By the way, I got some parallels down in there. Little pair of little 3H jobs. Now we're going to flip them over. And we're going to, nope, let's get our practice in. Red side towards the fixed face. Make sure we get that right. Not, obviously, not critical for this operation. All right, the next, uh, <clears throat> we've got a part in here. Remember, mark side to the back, zero, zero is right there in this corner. And uh, the first feature we're going to do is going to be the biggest. That's going to be the tap size hole for the one eight pipe tap, which is a size 332, which is a Q drill. Center drill there, or spotting drill. Uh, if you look at your drawing, uh, that hole needs to be in the middle, so we're going to go 250 from this side, from the back, remember? So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is, um, while I'm doing that feature and all these other features, we're going to do all these all at once. They're all 250 from the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my DRO. I'm going to space my... I'm going to come 250 off. That We picked up zero here. I'm going to come 250 off. 50. And I'm going to lock my Y-axis. Now my Y-axis isn't going to move for the entire time that I cut all these features on the two ends and the top because they're all the same spacing. So there we are with that. Now then I want to be how far from the end? Uh, 275 from the end. So let's come on over. Positive two seven five. Okay. Okay. 
We're at our location here. Now, one of the things I want you to uh, consider earlier when we picked up this back dimension and this X dimension, you've got to compensate for your uh, for half the diameter of your edge finder. So you're going to be a hundredth off. You're going to be a hundred thou off. So um, make sure that you either offset for that when you make your entry into your DRO or move it and then enter your zero. So anyway, I've already done that. And there we are. Like I said, it doesn't have to be dead center because we're just going to work everything. It just has to be the same dimension from the back every time. I don't think I looked at that drill too much when I put it in there. Oh. That might help. The end of that center drill was absolutely blunt. Completely flat. So turn it around. That wouldn't do me much good now, would it? And I'm um, going to take it on out while I'm thinking about it. Throw it in the trash. Okay, this is a size Q hole uh, to a depth of five-eighths of an inch for the tap for the um, one-eighth tapped size we're going to have here for our hose fitting. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down lock it right there on the surface and uh, Slow it down a little bit here. That's 
that's that first feature there, which is 5 8 inch hole for a eighth inch tap size. The next feature that's in that exact same location um, is a hundred thou hole that passes through uh, to an eighth inch hole on the other side for the actual a little spout made out of a piece of brass tubing. Uh, I don't want to drill that one yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill the other side eighth inch hole in and then I'm going to drill the hundred thou hole through the last little piece so that I'm not trying to drill a hundred thou hole all the way out to the other side of the block because the odds that the bit would wander is pretty high. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this other Q size hole done here and then uh, we'll come back and cut some, other fe some more features. So um, I've got the block back in, did the other large features. I've flipped it over, the red side still to the back. Now we're going to do the eighth inch hole in from the other side, the other end, in a half inch down towards the cue hole. Eagle-eyed observers will point out, yeah, but the we did the cue hole back here. If you flip it over, it's now over here. Yeah, you're right. No biggie. So uh, we were 275 from this end. Okay. We're still spacing off of this end. We've got an inch of total width here. All right. We've uh, got the cue size features. We flipped the block over. And now we're going to do the eighth inch hole in from the other side. This comes in a half an inch down towards that pipe, uh, eighth inch pipe hole. And um, okay, you, have, you might want to realize the we did the Q over here. We swoop, flop it over. It's now over on this end. That's fine. Do a little math. One inch total dimension minus the point two seven five back from this side seven two five. Bring it over seven two five. We got a spotting drill in, and we're going to spot off. For that eighth inch hole, again we're going to do this with the knee. Prepare for drill chuck overload. So I'm going to bring this down, and contact that spot, and then I'm going to come in a half an inch very gently because you can't really feel this. Um, with the knee. Zero my elevation. Crank it up a little bit. inch hole or eighth inch hole half inch down. I don't tend to push the drill as hard using the knee and the drill bits especially small bits don't wander as bad uh, when you're really uh, you know when you don't don't push them that hard so all right I'm gonna swap it over and do the other block. All right um, we flipped the, uh, flipped the block back over so the Q size hole is facing up. Uh, we've drilled our half inch hole uh, from the other side, the exit hole where the uh, eighth inch brass or copper pipe is going to go. Now we have to drill the hundred thou hole through uh, to this other side. We're actually using a number 38 drill bit, which is uh, 1015, which is a little big, but you know, uh, I don't have a hundred thou even. Uh, so we're going to use a number 38. They could have, uh, you know, you could go a little big, a little small, depending on what you have. Uh, the center of this uh, drilled hole will function as a as a center drill as a spot so that the the bit will 
uh, center up nicely. And we're just going to use the quill and drill through until we get to that eighth inch hole on the other side. And uh, we're going to use some RPM for this. Alright, that was about 2000 Sorry for the noise. My mill needs a rebuild. The head needs a rebuild for sure. And there we are. Let me blow it out here. And there you go. I think you can see through there. So we made it all the way through. And uh, so we have our three diameters through the bottom of the block. Um, I'll go ahead and get the other one here and finish it up, and then we'll move on from there. All right. So we're now getting ready to do this feature here, which is the attachment for the um, needle valve. Now, if you're using the same style needle valve I am, which is McMaster car part number, it's an Airtronics NV30, um, you're going to be drilling a hole that's uh, .1695 to attach this needle valve, uh, which is kind of a hack because it's a barbed valve. Eee, there it is. And we're going to soft solder it in place. Um, if you are attaching a different type of needle valve, you might need to modify this hole to fit your needs. Plenty of meat to do it. You could go all the way up to that same Q size feature uh, that is uh, used for this pipe fitting here. So uh, feel free to modify these um, attachment points as they uh, fit what's in your junk box. The things to not modify are this feature, this feature, and this little 40,000th feature here. The 40,000th feature is critical for making this thing work. So we're going to be drilling uh, .1695 to attach my needle valve and uh, we can change it, you know, feel free to change it up uh, to suit um, uh, what you have on hand. Alright, um, again, red side to the back, the Q size feature on this end, on your uh, left. Um, if you are using a similar size vise, um, I had to put in some taller parallels to bring it up. But, uh, Everything else remains the same. Put my spotting drill in here. Now we haven't touched our 250, so that uh, our Y is fine, and we need to be 0.75, three quarters of an inch from the end. So unlock my X and bring it over 0.75 that should put us pretty much dead center of the block Let's give it a spot all right now this is not going through so uh, I'm going to go back to my tried and true method of using the knee for my Z when I want to get a good Z. Um, I tend to use it. Um, if something else works better for you, do it that way as well. The lube, again, I'm using a, a 1695 drill. Um, something else, you know, feel free to modify this uh, to fit the uh, needs of what you have on hand. Zero my dial on my knee. So we're going to be coming down to a total depth of uh, 390 thou. At least that's from the print. Uh, plus or minus 
few thou certainly isn't going to matter. Uh, just don't break through uh, into that uh, number 38 size hole that is uh, down there. same size, the same locale is where we're going to drill through with that dinky little bitty 40 thousandths hole. And you know what? I hope this truck will hold the drill. Alright, that little 40 thousandths drill would not fit in that big chuck. So I had to put a Morse Taper 2 to R8 adapter in the mill spindle. And, um, and then, uh, I don't even know if you can see that drill. Let's see. There she is. A little bitty. I don't have far to go. She only have, well, it's a long ways. It's, it's several, it's several diameters through to the uh, to the hundred hole so I'm going to peck like Woody and uh, make this I only have a few of these little drills and I don't want to blow them so let's peck away we're going to crank the RPM up here sorry for the noise Let's see what we got. Well, good news, it broke through. Right where we want it to, I can see it in there. I'm going to have to run uh, that uh, number 38 drill back through there just to clean a little burr up and hopefully it doesn't clog the hole. But uh, it popped on through, so we are successful. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the other one set up and we'll see if you can see that hole. It's a little bitty down in there. So, a little bitty hole. So, all right, let's move on. So we have uh, both of those little pesky, tiny 40 thousandths holes drilled through these blocks. That was a real fun. You pretty much just can't feel a thing through the... Um, the quill handle at all so it's uh, I, I don't do a lot of work of that size range but I certainly would see the need for a if you did a nice sensitive drill one of these small high-speed drills uh, for doing these things anyway what we're going to do now is we're going to tap the um, Q size hole for uh, eighth inch pipe <clears throat> and you know taps it's all about getting them started straight and pipe taps can be kind of tricky because they're tapered and there's not a lot of slack here right so what I did is I've got the block in the vise. I'm set at 275. The red side is on the back. Don't forget that. 
and I've got the eighth inch pipe tap in a drill chuck here, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tap this completely uh, power tap it. I've got it in um, back gear uh, about 90 RPM. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire it up, I'm gonna feed the tap down right as it engages. I'm gonna kill the power. It's gonna give me a good start. Then I'm gonna take the chuck off. I'm gonna put the handle on, and I'm gonna finish it up. There you go. So that gives you a nice straight start, totally in line. Loosen up the chuck. Raise it up here. Get out my Greenfield number zero zero handle. And it's brass, so it's well lubed. So let's just crank it on down till we till we dead end. Notice I didn't use a pipe tap reamer to get a tapered hole. Um, if this was steel, um, some kind of harder material. It would certainly be advisable to uh, put a tapered reamer in. All right. Get that off. So there we go. We've got a um, tapped hole. That's for our air hookup, is hooks up here. And then now we're going to get set up to attach the needle valves um, to the uh, top of the block here. All right, YouTube. Um, so we got, a, we got our blocks done, basically, two blocks with our tapped eighth inch pipe holes, our outlet holes, eighth inch outlet holes, um, the um, holes for the needle valves, and the little bitty tiny 40 thousandths passage holes in there, which is real fun. Um, so next, we've got to attach, where did I put the needle valve? There it is. So we've got to attach the needle valve, and uh, it's not ideal situation because the needle valves barb barb. I couldn't find these. Th the only ones of these I could find that were threaded on the end were these were like 14 bucks or 15 bucks a piece. The ones with threads on one side of the uh, fitting were like 35 bucks a piece. That's just not going to happen. So well, let me get in close here. What I did was I. Um, I drilled the, see that little barb fitting there? It, this hole is a tight fit for that barb, right? That's the whole idea. So I'm going to stick a washer under here to space this up a little bit. All right, with the lathe here, we've got a 8-inch um, 5C in the collet chuck. We've got our little 8-inch uh, OD copper tubes. And all I'm going to do is clean the end up take the very slightest, like not even measured. If I'm changing the color, that's all I want to do is skim that end up there. Make 
shapes at all. I wanted to do is change the color of that. Let's slide this back in here. This is for the other end. This is the end that's going to go into the um, MIG chip. Same thing. I'm just going to clean it up. Clean up the end and take the skim off of it. Those two are done. I need to change the collet out for a larger size. Counterbore the back end of those MIG tips uh, an eighth of an inch. So let's figure out what size that is going to be. All right, we mounted a 1564th collet. It was a nice snug fit. Got the MIG, our uh, 40,000th MIG tip here. We might, might try a few of these over time just to see if they this is really the magic number or if uh, other sizes would work. I'm going to trim back past this little threaded section here and get rid of all this. Then we're going to counter drill, uh, counter bore this with an eighth inch drill bit to fit that copper tube. So let's fire it up, slow it down a little bit. cleaned up there. I think you can barely see that little 40 thousandths hole there. And uh, now we're going to get the eighth inch drill and we're going to counter bore this thing. Alright, we're going to center drill this. That little, I do not trust that little bitty dinky hole to start my drill. So this is uh, that little MIG tip there cleaned up. Let's fire it up. camera problem soldering on the needle valves but I did get the needle valve soldered and uh, I decided to mill a relief on the two blocks um, to give room to hook the hose up to the barred fitting rather than space the needle valve up with any kind of washer. Uh, that's not reflected in the drawings but you know um, uh, sometimes you gotta make on-the-fly decisions. Uh, anyway I, I had a little camera difficulty user error uh, to be honest, when I was uh, uh, soldering, but uh, they're on. Um, I've got the two uh, roughly six inch long uh, pieces of copper tubing ready to go. Got the two MIG tips here ready to go. MIG tips, uh, copper tubing. 
little bar of fittings to the air. So we're going to get these things assembled. And I've decided I'm going to I'm going to assemble these uh, rods and the MIG tips with a little Loctite. Uh, so that if I want to change out the tip to a different size, do a little experimentation, or if I damage one of these, it would be a little easier to um, repair. Just put a little bit of heat on it as opposed to a lot. Soldering a big block of copper like that is kind of difficult because it just soaks up the heat. Uh, it was somewhat of a pain. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get some uh, cleaning supplies out. And then we're going to Loctite, uh, we're going to Loctite these uh, parts in place here. Okay, we got a little acetone here. Um, gonna clean off these ends. Get uh, any grease and everything off of there. drip some down in here just gonna dunk them Take a little acetone and clean up this hole here. All right, let that evaporate. Okay, I'm like a little fingernail polish remover. And I apologize to all of my viewers that are in California. You may or may not be able to get a hold of that stuff anymore. cleaned up. And uh, let's get some Loctite out here. This is actually not a Loctite brand. Dab some out on the table there. Get rid of the excess there. stuff hits pretty hard so uh, you don't have to wait very long um, if you got a nice clean assembly give a little twist Got a burr. There we go. All right. They are locked together. Clean them up here. I put my excess on the table and. Uh, We'll give them a few minutes to dry. Then we'll mount our bar fittings <coughs> and um, uh, in put our needle valves back in, and we'll be ready to go. All right, <coughs> our uh, Loctite set up nicely. Uh, we're gonna 
uh, took the needle valves out to um, solder the needle valves on. I didn't want the O-rings to melt. So I'm going to screw those back in here. Got some um, little eighth inch bar fittings. Uh, to use with these, and make it a little gunk. Teflon. Goo goes a long way. Alright, got a little, um, my vise mounted up. I've got my, um, most of the vices in the shop mounted to uh, uh, these truck receivers so that you can uh, move them around. And uh, I've got a 5 8 inch bolt in the uh, welded to the side of the receiver tube, normally where the pin goes. And that makes everything nice and solid. This is one of those uh, toppies of a um, parrot vise that's sold widely. Uh, I think I received it as a gift. All right. There we go. Get my rag. Maybe get a little got some file marks and stuff. Get some sandpaper over here and do a little cleaning up. Certainly usable though, and uh, allow us to make sure that we uh, get everything in workable mode. So um, I guess this will be uh, part one. Part two is going to be setting up the um, coolant container. There's our two units. There's the drawing. Um, Again, the link to the drawing is in the Dropbox. Uh, there's drawings all over the net.